Good afternoon, everyone. It's a big question. Where do we drive from here? And why that question today and not yesterday? And what is really behind those words? Well, let's see if it's going. Looks like we are not driving anywhere. What is this? Maybe this one. Aha. So, at least I learned how to operate this gadget. Um, <laughs> we all got custom to drive a certain way. And you can see a very interesting cluster of cars. Not sure how far they can go. By the way, it's not in Israel. In Israel, it's much more structured than here for all of the, you who drove here in Israel. Um, but it's all about to change. And you spend the two days here uh, seeing how all the changes are coming up. And the car and the looks, it's all be very, very different from what it is now. And it's not just the car that is different. It is the entire ecosystem it's the entire platform that will change, and not only the platform, it's also the business model. What will be the business model? Even how our community will look like with the change of how we move from point A to point B, with what type of vehicle, how those vehicles will know where they are, how those vehicles will come to pick you up, what will be the envelope of that operations, it's all about to change. And that change, we better get ready for that because eventually, think about the aut uh, automotive industry, would they continue to develop car for each one of us? Or maybe it will be only fleet, will not be an individual car. That's not clear, and no one knows what the answer, neither do I, but we have to be ready and to prepare for all of that. <clears throat> the travel experience will change for good. There is, is no question about it. So in that platform, you can see that it starts from even the development tools, how you develop uh, chips, how you develop communication, the development of the uh, uh, tools that will drive the design and the application of the cars is going to change. The entire processing, the sensors, there is a big shift in, and, and need for new sensors that are not exist today. And you can see the connectivity. One of the uh, area that we need to think is what will be the brain behind those individual car, behind the fleet, behind, this is all artificial intelligence. So every segment in technology and in business is going to be here and play a role, and we all need to be ready, think about it, a full, uh, full digital world, a full uh, um, um, autonomous car, and smart factory, and smart houses. We talk about estimate. That's an estimate that one million people city will generate more than 200 mega giga, which is penta, petabyte of data. How are you going to process all this, inf all this data? And how do you manage it and how you, how you drive it? That's a big, big challenge that we all need to see. And more important, how are you going to keep it safe? That the bad guy will not do a mess in the old uh, 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 driving system and drive some car to the wall. If we think that in the old day, the uh, iPhone was a big platform change, that's true. iPhone was a big platform change, but it was no related to human life. Here, there is people life on the line. And the question, are we going to be ready for that major, major change when life is on the line here. So the business sector is running very, very fast. We all know it, and it's hard to slow it down. The question is, what about the government? What about the regulation? Are the regulators, 
up to speed with the uh, technology. And you all know exactly. The question is, how do we bridge it? And I'm talking on behalf of the government, and I know that the government is behind. We need to make a major effort to drive it closer, because if not, we can drive ourselves into disaster, not only the autonomous car, overall the digital revolution that we're going through. It's in the medical, it's in the, everywhere that you want. We don't want to, that our, think about it today, that even our democracy, some people argue, not in Israel, that foreign forces get involved in our democracy. Wow, really? We didn't manage to protect ourselves. Some country, some managed to protect themselves. Think about all the Israeli friends around us that want to change, uh, to take down the power that we have here. If you would know how many attacks, cyber attacks on Israeli uh, utility company. So Israel provides a large variety, I just started to touch on that, of solution that you can start to find. <clears throat> and we are becoming now a really center of innovation and entrepreneurship. Israel in 2017, the investment in R&D is the highest in the world as percentage of GDP. 4.3% of the GDP is R&D. And that's great, not by the government. Most of it, it's, it's, it's external, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a from overseas. You can see that Korea is a second, Japan, and we are in a good company. There are a lot of investment here in the startup. 5.2 billion capital raised last year. This year, I think it will even go above it. Israel is number one, as I said, uh, in the R&D as percent of GDP. Foreign investment in R&D is 57% of the overall business R&D. On the VC investment, we are second. That's a, a silver medal. Second to the Silicon Valley. So Israel is attracting a, not only a lot of innovation, but also a lot of investment and a lot of investors. So Israel Innovation Authority, our job is to enable that innovation, the entrepreneurship, to drive the, all this breakthrough technology. But what we want to now to do is not only to be the startup nation, we want to turn a page, build on top of the startup nation, innovation, and sustainable growth. That's critical that the high-tech industry will leverage, will lift up the entire Israel economy in a much better and more efficient way that we have been doing it. And we're investing in Israel Innovation Authority, we're investing in the um, uh, manufacturing technologies, in the low productivity company, on top of the uh, uh, startups. But also there is another point. What will be 10 years from now, 15 years from now? Are we going to still be so attractive? That's only depend if we today invest in the future technologies, in, for example, artificial intelligence, for example, quantum, quantum computing, quantum sensors, which will be needed also for autonomous car. So Israel Innovation Authority investing in what already running up. You can see technology transfer, entrepreneur, startup. We invest in, when I say invest, it's conditional loans that we give in all different uh, area and, and spectrum of product life cycle, as well as different technology, because no one in, in our uh, side know what will be the next wave. Will it be? Today, it's a big hype of uh, automotive industry, right? Uh, that's why you are all here, autonomous industry. That's why you're all here. Who knows what will be five years from now? So back to uh, tools that Israel Innovation Authority provide. We have an innovation labs where a company got uh, uh, applied for in, in a bid in, uh, that, that we had. And we give support for those uh, companies, like 33% uh, of the CapEx, and then uh, usage and for three years, up to 85% of startups who join those uh, innovation labs. In those innovation labs that we had the tender for, there were five winners. One of them that you can see here is Renault Nissan and uh, Mitsubishi that they, developed, they set up 
a test, test lab, and startup can come and test their product in that lab. And that is one of interesting uh, idea where we can attract more different uh, industry to come here. You can see here also the, um, the Merck and the uh, Merck uh, that doing a, a special materials. You can see Fruitorum. So we took different uh, a field, different area, and we gave the first uh, round of, uh, of uh, innovation labs, and we plan to do uh, more than that. So, so in the investment program that we have for alternative fuel, sorry, we have developing uh, technologies uh, to reduce dependent on oil that you are all here for. Again, another program of about 400 million Israeli shekel, about 125 uh, million dollar from 2011 to 2010, uh, 20, with a ratio of investment of two to one. What I'm trying to send you a message that we have multiple programs that support you, the investors, the startup, startup companies, to minimize the risk that you take, and we, the government, uh, support you and playing part of it. There is more than 400 automotive companies in Israel, and none even of the tier one startup, uh, tier one uh, automotive industry, and still 400 uh, uh, automotive companies. So with that, we all know that in the past, the oil was the king. Today, we are going into innovation. That's the king. That's why you are here. And with that, I would like to thank you.